Hello everybody, what I'm gonna go over today with you is just about planning session plans. So like the way I was brought up and the way that the coaching course has always taught me was listen, we're gonna have an objective for the day, what we want to accomplish, here's our warm up, here's how the warm up goes into the first exercise, which might be a smaller exercise, and eventually the session probably ends up with goals and goalkeepers, and we and it works all into this is what the objective was today, this is the topic, and it builds into this real game at the end of the training session. And if you were being evaluated on that, they would look and say, hey, did you? what were your objectives? Did you stick to the plan? And did it make sense going from your warm up all the way to your, your, your larger game with goalies and keepers, right? And I'm here to say a pre-planned session plan like that for me, just because it was the way I was always taught, I've strayed away from that in, in some pretty substantial ways because I'm not the guy to accept that just because it was the way that we've always been taught is the way it should be. So I yes, I do have my, my game model. I do have my own personal methodology that, that I believe in for developing players from age group to age group. However, in every session plan that I do, it's a very flexible training session. So what I mean by that is I jot down ideas, I jot, jot down, you know, this is what I, I hope that the players could take away from this, but it remains flexible. And I'll give you a couple examples. So if a team comes in on Mondays, our team never trains very well. So for some reason on Mondays, guys are tired, they come in, uh, they had Sunday off. And I feel that if we go straight into say small area possession, some rondo activities, it's a little slow for me. I like, on uh, if I feel that the energy level on that Monday is lower than it should be when the kids are coming into the field and I say hello to them and that's my way of kind of gauging how they're doing. I watch their body language. I, I watch, you know, are they enthusiastic with me when I'm speaking to them and interacting with them between, you know, before the session starts. And if I feel that they need a little more boost, we're gonna go a really hard physical warm up. I'm gonna get them in, get them sweating, get them competing against each other. And then when that warm up is done, they're ready. They're focused, they're ready to go with the session for the day. Now, if they come in and they have a big energy level and they're talking to me and they're excited, I'm gonna switch it. We're gonna go straight into small area possession and the rondos and all these things. So I'm taking my cues from them of what we're gonna do. Then, when we get into the training session itself, what if there's some things that, that I need to fix right away? And when I say fix, just change. Maybe a constraint isn't working and it's not realistic and it's breaking down. I change it and I see, all right, is this a better environment from the players? Can every player take something away from this training session? And those are the first things that I look at. Now. If a training session, say, is going really well and I like the exercise and the kids are really benefiting from it, why can't I keep that exercise and just say, you know what, I had these two progressions planned, but this learning environment is so good that all I have to do is just maybe keep putting in a little variability here and there just to make it a little bit, a little bit of a change, but why can't they stay in that the entire training session? Why not? The, the idea is for that player, those players, that team to walk away with a real meaningful experience where it adds to them being a better team, a better player, increasing soccer intelligence and so forth. Very, very important. Now, what if I had an exercise plan, say, hey, this is the next progression, but I just felt that maybe it wasn't right based upon what, what, what I saw in training so far and I say you know what I would rather now go and create this environment instead because it's what I'm feeling what I got from the first two exercises right the first two environments I created so let me just scrap my plan and go with this next thing and for me that that's that's the flexibility that I like as a coach and I think it's really good for the players and one of the things that I'll say is you, know, you see these these coaching things where these 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 lesson plans these where it goes all right we're going to spend 10 minutes exactly on the warm up we're going to spend 15 minutes in small area position 20 minutes in medium area and then we're going to finish the exercise going to goal with keeper for me i i respect it it's fine 
but I don't want to be regimented like that. Can I go over? Why can't I go over in time? Can I go under? Maybe I keep the same exercise the entire training session because it's going so well. So I would tend to stay away, me personally, from these regimented two minutes here, 10 minutes here, this, that. Now I do understand from a workload perspective, if you want the guys to go full intensity in a small area, medium area, whatever it is, three minutes, boom, and then we get three to one ratio maybe, maybe you rest a minute and then three minutes on again, whatever it is, I do understand from a workload standpoint. But my whole thing with, with this video right here is just to plant the seed of flexibility. And you know, I had an interesting conversation with a goalkeeper coach in the UK who who kind of turned me on to this. He said that, you know, the way goalkeeping training has been done, in his opinion, him growing up and the players of the past, just because it was done that way doesn't mean it's the best experience for the keepers. He said there's a lot of rote learning there. If all you're going to do, you know, every day you start out with volleys from your hands to the keepers, you know, from your feet to the keepers' hands, he's like, what is the keeper really learning there? There's no decisions made, being made. What is the keeper really doing with all this footwork between the cones and over hurdles? If it's not for a physical preparation, if it's not for building maybe agility and fitness levels, why? Why are you doing it? It's not game realistic to their actual physical movements on the field. So in his keeper trainings, everything is about decision making and game realistic movements and behaviors. Um, otherwise, what is the point doing it? And I thought that was very interesting for a guy to come out and say, standard goalkeeping training that you see, much of it he wouldn't touch because he doesn't believe in it. And I, I, again, I found that that's a very interesting perspective. So hopefully you enjoyed some of those insights. Um, not saying that I'm right, but I think it's really important to always hear uh, a different message than the message that we're constantly presenting.